Isaiah 24 1 Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. The earth is about to go through some cataclysmic changes, between now and the second coming of Jesus Christ. In a short period of time, the North American continent will become the new South Pole and the Southern Indian Ocean will become the new Arctic Circle. The Earth will revert back to its original position prior to Noah's flood. Siberia will have a temperate climate once again. The Sahara Desert will begin receiving abundant moisture, and the ice covering much of Antarctica will begin to melt. Most of the northern half of the United States of America, or Babylon the mother of harlots, will once again be covered with several miles of ice. Revelation 18:21 And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. Revelation 18:22 And the voice of harpers, and musicians, and of pipers, and trumpeters, shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman, of whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Revelation 18:23 And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. I believe that when Jesus Christ gathers his saints there will be a pole shift that will turn the earth upside down. You will be able to observe the North Star from, Antarctica. Revelation 11:12 And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Revelation 11:13. In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. I believe a pole shift caused the great flood during Noah's time and the South Pole was originally located in North America. God promised that there would never be another flood that covers the entire earth, but I would still not want to be living on the coast, or next to any large body of water, if I was unsaved. Jesus is not coming in secret, everybody will know that he has arrived. Revelation 6:14 And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Revelation 6:15 And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Revelation 6:16 And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Revelation 6:17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? I believe chapter 6 of the book of Revelation is a description of the rapture slash resurrection on September 24, 2029. There will be a period of six months from the rapture to just before Jesus returns with the church to set up his kingdom on June 7, 2030. This will allow the Antichrist time to gather all of his demon-possessed armies, from throughout the whole earth, to fight with Jesus Christ when he arrives at the Mount of Olives. Psalm 2 1 Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? Psalm 2 2 The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord, and against his anointed, saying. Psalm 2 3 Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. Psalm 2 4 He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Psalm 2 5 Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Psalm 2 6 Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Needless to say, the battle will be short and the Antichrist's followers will be totally destroyed. Jesus Christ will defeat all the armies of the Antichrist with a word from his mouth. Revelation 19 17 And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Revelation 19:18 that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great I began considering the pole shift hypothesis after I read the book called Atlantis beneath the ice by Rand and Rose Flemot They present some very compelling scientific evidence that there was a pole shift via earth crust displacement that completely wiped out an ancient civilization called Atlantis about 12,000 years ago. Of course, I believe the Word of God is inspired and I believe the ancients and the moderns tend to exaggerate, 
therefore, I believe Atlantis, as part of the Antediluvian world, was destroyed approximately 4,300 years ago. The theory of Earth crust displacement was first proposed by Charles Hapgood, a professor of anthropology at Keene State College in New Hampshire. According to Professor Hapgood's theory, all the continental plates on the Earth's crust can shift altogether as a unit. As the Earth's crust ripples over its interior, the world is shaken by incredible earthquakes and floods. During a displacement the sun appears to rise and set over an altered horizon until finally the crust grinds to a halt. Beneath the ocean, earthquakes generate massive tidal waves that crash against the coastlines, flooding them. Some lands are shifted to warmer climates. Others, propelled into the polar zones, suffer the direst of winters. Atlantis beneath the ice, Rand and Ras Flamat. This description of earth crust displacement also seems to fit descriptions of Bible prophecy concerning the birth pains prior to the arrival of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 24 19 The earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. Isaiah 24 20 The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall, and not rise again. You may think I'm trying to scare people, and you may be right. Over and over, throughout the Holy Bible, we are warned not to trust in men or the world. 2 Peter 3:10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. 2 Peter 3:11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? 2 Peter 3:12 Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 2 Peter 3:13 Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter 3:14 Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. If you look up pole shift on the internet, you will likely find all kinds of crazy theories and strange people advocating the idea. Most people do not even believe in a spirit called Satan, let alone believe he is actively trying to discredit the truth. If you remember the young girl in the book of Acts that was possessed by the spirit of divination, she followed the apostle Paul around and blatantly told the crowds that he was a servant of the Most High God. Acts 16:16, 16, 16 And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Acts 16:17. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. I am sure that Satan eventually intended to discredit Paul and the Gospel through this young girl. Therefore, just because someone comes speaking the truth, does not necessarily mean they are not servants of Satan. We need to discern people's motives regardless whether they are speaking the truth or not. Unfortunately for many people, they oftentimes are more than willing to dismiss the word of God because some person speaking God's word has been discredited. Most people believe that everything will continue forever the same as it has for the past several thousands of years. However, the Apostle Peter specifically addresses this belief and warns us that it is a serious error. 2 Peter 3 1 This second epistle, Beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. 2 Peter 3 2 That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Saviour. 2 Peter 3 3 Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. 2 Peter 3 4 And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. 2 Peter 3 5 For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. 2 Peter 3 6 Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. 2 Peter 3 7 But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. There are literally thousands of volcanoes on the land and beneath the sea. Some of these volcanoes are super volcanoes similar to the Yellowstone caldera. When Jesus Christ returns and an earth crust displacement occurs, I expect all of these volcanoes are going to begin erupting at the same time. Revelation 16:10 And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Revelation 16:11 And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. 
shouldn't we take St. Peter's advice and start preparing ourselves to meet the Lord? After all, we are nearly 2,000 years closer to the arrival of Jesus Christ than when Peter wrote his epistle. Our Lord told us that his return would be like the days of Noah and Lot. Luke 17 26 And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Luke 17 27 They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came, and destroyed them all. Luke 17 28 Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Luke 17 29 But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. How are Noah and Lot similar to these days that we currently live in? Everyone was destroyed except Noah and Lot, and their families. There is really no safe place on the earth. If you want to survive the coming destruction, you must know Jesus Christ. Isaiah 26 19 Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Isaiah 26 20 Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Isaiah 26 21 4, Behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Have a great week. Thanks.